Hello everyone, Dino Don here, back with a progress report on War Corsair. Uh, sorry I wasn't able to get a video in last week. I tried. I came down here Saturday to work on the check the toe in, toe out of the airplane. And what I ended up doing is I come out here and I worked on the gear, fiddle around with them. <clears throat> um, I was working on just measuring it. I wanted to see where they were. So what I ended up doing is I went and bought a laser level. And what we got here is a Bosch, Bosch level. And it puts out a uh, cross pattern. You can see the beam it shows up. You can see the beam shooting down the center of this ruler, this four foot ruler. And what I got it is, is I've got it so it crosses right through the very center of the propeller spinner. And then as we come back here to the tail of the plane, It might have moved. I was back here fudging with the tail. But you can see there, it passes basically through the center of this bolt. Uh, it's off a little bit, but I was back here working on this tail wheel. I ended up getting a, a heavier spring. So now it's in the detent. See, now it's got a nice solid clunk. Got a heavier spring for it. So I was fiddling with that and it probably, you know, screwed this thing. It just only takes a little bit to mess it up. So that's what I ended up doing. I got the spring changed and I just did that before I started this recording. But then what I did, once I got a center line shot, last weekend I was just using some masking tape on the floor. So this week I stopped at Lowe's and picked up this little like one by two furring strip, piece of pine, um, it's like cabinet grade. So I drew a center line on the board and I came out exactly Third, three foot uh, one inch because the spacing on the landing gear is exactly six foot two inches so 13 36 and 37 inches to these lines all right so that laser was set up like that to measure and then I take this bring it over here put it right there on up against tight I got two quart cans of paint and a piece of wood and then after I make adjustments on this I bang it back and forth there is a little play in these things because building this stuff from scratch you can't you can't make it precision no way especially when you're welded all up you start welding stuff on here and everything warps so it was, uh, so it's got a little play in it the the strut itself jiggles a little and there's just a little wiggle in the the toe in toe out now <clears throat> so what I do is I shot a line out here and then with this ruler or straight edge, you can see the uh, crosshairs right there on the ruler. So slide this over, and then I put a mark on the board. And you can see i got many, many marks here. And then I subtract the difference from where the laser is to the center of the tire, which is about two and three quarters of an inch. And then I measure from that mark to here, and it gives me my toe out. Well, last week when I did this, last Saturday, found out I had toe in. Even though I set this plane for toe out, when I originally put the gear in and bolted it all in, it was set for one degree toe in. And then after finding out later about an article from an engineer, a mechanical engineer, aircraft stuff, he's the guy that says toe out and he explained why and I explained that in previous videos. So, so that's when I decided to uh, because the linkage to adjust the toe in is up here, up in here, and it's all buried inside this cone, the uh, leading edge of the wing. <laughs> You'd have to literally cut this open to get up to those. There's two tabs about two inches tall, and when you turn the shaft, the shaft has one of the miter gears on it that's fixed, and by turning that miter gear forward or backwards, it causes the other one to turn the strut in and out. So. Uh, so my idea was to try and get up into the bolts through the back here. There's two of them, quarter inch bolts. Take them out, um, turn the gear so them ears fall out of the way, drill the hole oversize, put the bolts back in, and, and then pull the gear out as far as it could. I calculated drilling it from a quarter to a three-eighths inch would give me that uh, eight, eight, uh, that one degree of toe out. So, But before, when it was towed in, I made these lower control arm, these scissors, with a degree of toe out, but all that did was kind of neutralize it and made it zero. Well, it was still a tad bit under. It was like 0.4 degrees, so it was like a half a degree 
toe in on each side. It was, this one was actually straight. That one over there was towed in 0.8 degrees. Uh, figuring out a, a tangent line from here out to roughly 85 inches. A little over, you know, uh, 7 foot, 1 inch. So, <clears throat> so I just spent the day trying to get this thing all uh, checked out, and that's why I found I had toe in. So now my guess, next thing was, what do I do? Make another pair of scissors, another lower one with another degree or more in it, to try to get my toe out, or try to get up in here to these bolts and work that, and then you'd have to get in there with an angle drill and a short drill bit to kick it out to three-eighths. And then I realized something. This landing gear, when it folds back, everybody knows that the wheel rotates toes out as it goes. So when the gear goes back 90 degrees, the wheel rotates 90 degrees, lays flat inside the fuselage. So what I realized was these are adjustable rod ends. By adjusting these rod ends longer, pushes the wheel forward, the strut forward, which causes toe in. You shorten them rod ends, it pulls the toes, toes the wheel out. So all I had to do was get in here and take take this bolt out, but you got to jack the plane up to do it. Take that bolt out, screw those in uh, so many turns to pull that one degree of toe in. So that's what I did today, uh, yesterday. I came down yesterday and I worked, like I said, four hours. I did four hours like last Saturday and I did another four hours yesterday. And today I've been out here for uh, two, two and a half hours working on it again. Um, I ended up having to trim a little bit of material off the end of these because the rod ends were pretty close to being bottomed out at that point. You see, now I've got some adjustment left. So this one here, I probably turned in four or five turns. Now that one over there, because it was already pretty straight, uh, I only went two and a half turns on that. And I ended up with a one and five sixteenths toe out at roughly seven foot. Um, to get to a full one degree, it had to be closer to an inch and a half. But I figured I'm going to just go with a little less than an inch of uh, or a degree of toe out. So that's what I've been fiddling with today. So, like I said, and then I threw the laser on there, and it was back and forth. Every time I jacked the plane up, I had to reshoot the center line. And then with the stick, that's the reason for the stick, I could move the stick left and right now and then get that back on center, and then I can, it was a lot faster and quicker. So, uh, so that's where I'm at. <clears throat> now, this is, uh, this is the jack I just built. Now, I worked on this yesterday morning, spent a couple hours finishing this design up. Uh, what I got here is a little saddle. The wings are bolted on with some 3 8 inch bolts in the front, and then there's a 1 inch aluminum bushing in there so when they tighten down they crush this bushing. Well this is a one inch ID piece of tubing welded onto a one inch ID tube and then, and then the top of this is ground down so that fits on there. So, so it spins nice and freely. So you put line that up with that bushing and then I can just jack the thing right up. So this is all uh, chromoly tubing. This is like eighth inch wall. This is sixteenth inch wall. That's eighth inch plate. Inch and a quarter I bought at Lowe's. This is just some eighth inch uh, um, cold rolled steel plate and it's been all TIG welded so <clears throat> and then I had put the jack in the lathe you can see the little tick marks there where the jaws grabbed it and I turned this thing around to match this radius and I had to flatten the bottom out because then this thing's all welded together from the factory you can't take this apart like the bigger jacks so the bottom of this base was warped had a, a bow in it so it wouldn't set flat, so I had to turn the base of this and then turn the outside to get, this was square. So I could cut all the corners off, put it in a lathe, and round it up. So the jack is physically centered in here. So in order to do a gear swing with this, it's going to take two of these, two of these jacks. Oh, squatting, I've been squatting too much. Uh, the only problem is because that bolts are so close to the gear, and when this is setting in there, it's got to kind of go like this around the tire. And when the tire goes to go out, it's probably going to hit back here. So, so I'm going to change this over to a cup design with a, a V, a groove, a tapered, uh, a V-shaped cone cut into a, a piece. And I'll probably come out here on the bottom of the wing, measure in so far to get this jack out. So it's, I only have to go maybe six inches. And I'll make me a big washer with a fitting on it and a quarter inch hole, and it'll just 
push open the bottom of the wing and you put the jack on there and jack it up like any other normal aircraft. And then you, when you're done, you just pull that bushing back out and they can stay in the plane. So if you're ever out off field somewhere and you need to jack the plane up, you'll be able to use those if anybody's got a short enough pair of jacks. So that's where I've been today. Um, one more thing. <clears throat> While I'm tinkering around with the tail wheel, I, I mentioned I, I bought a, a, this is a PWM uh, pulse width modulation speed controller. And my tail wheel is a retract motor out of a uh, Ford Mustang window. It's a window motor uh, for power windows. This cold is really affecting this focus on this camera. So, but uh, what I'm looking to do is uh, the tail wheel motor operates off of uh, two relays, 30 amp Bosch type relays, five pin relay. So all I got to do is you just run power and ground in and then power and ground out to the motor. So I have to wire this in. All I got to do is cut the power and ground wires going to the two relays because they go to the relays and they split and go to each relay, one for up, one for down. And what I can do is cut the wires, run the power leads in, and then the two out go right to the inputs of the relays. And then this is a on-off switch, and it goes from zero to 100% duty cycle. And I've already tested this on a uh, another uh, window motor I have for my Mustang project right now. And you can turn that thing way, way down to it just barely comes on, and that motor just crawls, and you can't stop it. It's got plenty of torque, because what happens is this gives you full voltage, you know, 12, 13 and a half, 14 volts, whatever your alternator puts out. And what that'll do is allow me to slow down that tail wheel. When I turn that tail wheel, flip the switch to bring that gear up, that thing goes, I mean, it just literally goes slam, slam. And then when it's slammed so hard, the motor's in there mounted, it keeps trying to pull the motor down and putting slack in the chain drive. Uh, so, but it's too fast. It's, it's always been too fast. I've always looked to do something like this, but my original idea was putting a resistor in there to cut the voltage back, but doing that, then you can't get the motor to run. The motor needs that 12 volts to, to start, and the resistor wouldn't work. So I found this on eBay. I can't remember what I paid for it. Couldn't have been 10 bucks or something. It's really nice. It's all uh, MOSFETs. So it works beautiful, though. But I can adjust this so it takes, you know, three, four seconds for that. Because the gear takes, you know, about five seconds to go up and down, and the tail wheel doesn't have to go that fast. So. Someday, i got to pull the tank off to get in to adjust my brake pedals because they're back just a little too far. I want to adjust them forward. And while I'm in there, the, the relays are right here underneath the instrument panel. And I can cut it and wire that in there and tie it up out of the way. Take care of that when I, when I decide to get into that. So that's one thing I need to do is adjust the tail, adjust the rudder pedals, put that in, which is a very simple job, and then adjust it. And then uh, this is the springs. You can see the one on the left, the short one, is the original spring I had in there. And the right one is the new spring. Lose it, lose it, or whatever. But anyway, the new spring is 45 thousandths wire, and the old one, stand over there, is 35 thousandths. 32 maybe, 32, 35. So this one can, uh, and it's, I can't remember what the pounds per inch, but this one will go up to 60 pounds. That one, other one maybe went to 10. So um, I put the spring in full length with the ball, had to kind of compress it, put it in there, and that's what you heard how nice and stiff it is now. Um, if it's too stiff, I can always take it out, trim a little bit off, put it back in there. I do have a set screw in there to compress, a set screw designed to compress this to change the tension, but I figured this thing went in and only stuck out about an eighth of an inch, quarter inch ball, press it in there, and it's nice. Fits good. I like the way it fits. <clears throat> that's these springs here. Pack of five from McMaster Car. If you ever need little things like that, you can't beat McMaster Car. They're just like uh, Granger. And this temperature out here is definitely playing with the focus on this camera. So, let's see if we can get this thing to focus somewhere. So that's kind of where I'm at. Um, I'm ready to go home. It's, it's a lot calmer today. When I was down here yesterday, uh, it was like 60 degrees, but it was windier than hell. It was really kicking up a storm out there. It was probably 15 mile an hour winds gusting to at least 30. They were calling for 28, and we got every bit of that. 
So now I'm going to go up in here and take some pictures of this uh, tailwheel limit switches. I actually have to go in and adjust this one. It's not tripping properly. It's, it's pushing the lever on the micro switch to the side and it's not telling that it's down. Well, I've never did manage to get a uh, set of uh, down uh, landing gear lights to let you know the condition of the gear. So I have nothing in there to tell me if the gear are down or if they're up or anything. So um, there's two limit switches in the back, up, down, and same way with the main gear. Each one has two, up, down. And what I'm going to do is I still have more of those. I'm going to go and put one more in in the down position. I'm just going to piggyback them, put them, bolt them together, longer screw, so that when the gear comes down, it triggers both switches. And I'll just take either, usually I use a ground trigger on my switches. I don't like running power to them because this is just energizes the relays on and off. That's all it does. There's no power for the motor. The motor comes from the relay wires. The, the limit switches are wired through <coughs> excuse me, through um, uh, relays, 30 amp relays. So it's very, it's just milliamps that trigger those things. So I'm going to put two of them in there so they both get triggered at the exact same time when the gear's down. And then that signal will go up, that single wire will go up to a light in the cockpit to tell me that the tail's down, main's down. So I'm just going to piggyback so I need to run one wire to each gear, extra wire, to wire those in. And get those in the panel so I know that they're down. And I may even put one in, like a red one, that when the gear is in transit, it comes on lets you know that the gear's not up nor down. Uh, I'm going to take some time to think that over, see if there's a way to trigger when it's up and down. But that would require three more switches and an extra wire so not quite sure um, but at least have uh, a gear down three green down and then maybe a single red I've already drilled three little holes in the instrument panel for some very small LED lights typical old style LEDs you can see the laser shining turn that off this thing just works off of I think it was two double A's that came with it that was a $55 laser from Lowe's they had some Craftsman's that were a little cheaper, uh, but this one's good up to like 30 feet, so it worked well. Uh, I got my drill out because I got to put this panel back on. But I want to take a couple pictures of the micro switches up here so I can get an idea uh, if I can come out here and just do a quick uh, install of the switches. And uh, I need to make a wider piece on the thing so it comes down and triggers both switches simultaneously. Or make the switches with something on there that triggers one it pulls the other two at the same time one way or another i got to get it done so i think uh today's a lot better it's it's only it's only like 42 degrees out here today doesn't feel that bad in here uh, outside it's a little bit of breeze but it's i mean it's good enough that you can probably get out in taxi so so right now toes out where i want it at least it's out um, with a little bit of play in there, whenever you're running the toe outs, they're going to try and pull themselves out even farther. So that's another reason why I didn't go the full inch and a half. Uh, one half a turn on that rod end changed this side over here almost an inch. So out here. So I can't go any tighter than that. Luckily, I ended up with one and five sixteenths on each side, as close as I could measure. So. Uh, let's see, anything else? I still haven't got out the taxi fast enough to see if this problem was fixed, but I believe it is. It should be because it's been running absolutely perfect. Uh, the thermostat took care of the overheat, overheating problem. So now it's just a matter of getting her back outside. I'm surprised that we've had weather this nice this long. Uh, it's supposed to be in the 40s and 30s the rest of the week. Snow again. Um, it did snow this past week, but it melted the uh, very next day. Um, that next weekend, they're still showing it could be up to around 50 on Friday. Uh, Wednesday, Thursdays, and Fridays, I can't do much. I work. So Saturday, if it's decent enough, really all I need to do is just come down and, and take it out and test it. So I can get test that see if it's too tight, if it's just nice. It'll take a little more break to pop her loose, but I like it. it just riding a little bit of break, that, that'll probably tend to slide or just squeeze so you can probably still get a decent taxi in the ramp area. Uh, let me think. Anything else? Oh, I had to threw some, they had actually had some like sandbags here. These things probably weigh 30, 40 pounds a piece. Uh, when this thing tails up this high, there's, you know, not 10 pounds of weight back here. So trying to jack the plane up, all it wants to do is tip on its nose. 
So I put a bag on there. This still isn't quite perfectly level. It's got to go higher than this to be level, but it's close enough for what I was trying to get done. So, like I said, I got the flap switch resolved, so that's fixed. Basically, everything is good enough now that I can take it out and taxi. <laughs> right now, my, my back is killing me. Uh, all this crawling around on my knees. I got arthritis all through my spine, so uh, it kills me to crawl around like this. Uh, and I'm tired. I'm hungry, ready to go home, playing out here in the cold. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, end this video here. Come on, camera, focus. It's amazing how much it's cold. Every Only when it's cold that I get this issue with this thing wanting to not autofocus. And it's still not wanting to focus. There she comes. So, uh, again, I'll get that put in whenever I get the tank pulled loose. I don't have to, I just got to get, get the turnbuckles, uh, which still is a pain. You got to really reach in there and stand on a box to get to them. Uh, all I have to do is take the turnbuckles, uh, unhook them from the frame, and then I can pick the tank up, turn it sideways, and kind of push it out of the way to get to the pedals, and then I have access to the panel. So I don't have to remove it. I just have to un physically unhook the attach points and just push it to the side. Uh, there's probably less than half tank fuel in there. I can move it around. But that'll allow me to throw this thing in and get that tuned. And then with this, I can pull the circuit breaker on the hydraulic pump and then just run the gear up, which that one does need adjusted. And now that I've made these changes here, I'm going to have to do a full gear swing and make sure they still. Basically, it's only going to be swinging 88, 89 degrees instead of like 90 degrees when it goes all the way back. It'll still trigger the switches to shut it off at the exact same time, but the wheel's going to be in a little different orientation. You just got to make sure it's going to clear the gear doors when they close. So before I ever do a gear up in a flight test, uh, I got to get this thing, I got to make another jack, get it jacked up and do a full gear swing, readjust the switch, make sure all the switches are in good shape and redo the tail wheel. The tail wheel I can do like right now if I had that in there. It'd be real easy to, to do it, but I also want to add that extra switch for the lights. So, I mean, it's just little things I want to do over time. Again, you know, eventually I'll get some uh, wing lights out here, landing lights up in the nose, taxi light and a tail light. All that stuff I can add later. That I don't need until I'm ready for night flying. Um, which everybody thinks this thing's never going to fly. And why don't you get a test pilot? No, I'm not going to test pilot. It's my airplane. I'm going to fly the damn thing. So forget about test pilots. It ain't going to happen. Uh, and then uh, <clears throat> don't have the money to pay anybody to do that kind of work either. Uh, those guys are not cheap. And there's nobody around here that I, that would even want to try and fly this thing because nobody's ever had anything like this before. So I'm going to fly it, and that's that. So, All right, folks, I'm going to go ahead and cut this loose and... Uh, Get that panel back in, get everything throwed in, get the tail down, and get the hell out of here for the day. I've had enough. So, all right, folks, as always, appreciate you taking time to watch these videos. Feel free to leave any comments, questions, or concerns. Um, maybe next weekend the weather's going to hold out and I can get back down here and try and get it out and do some taxiing, at least some. Uh, last week it was like the same as yesterday. It was just windy and hell raining. And it did. It's all it did yesterday. It was uh, windy and rain. So, all right, folks. Um, again, uh, feel free to leave any comments, questions, concerns, and uh, I'll answer them as they come in. So, as always, folks, um, this is Don and Don out, and I'll catch you guys hopefully in another week. Bye.